All right, guys, tonight we're going to talk about dividing monomials. We um, multiplied to powers to powers. Now we're going to be dividing. So what are you going to learn today? Um, you're going to learn about zero exponents, negative exponents, how to divide powers. So right here I've got powers of 10. And I've written them either in decimal notation. Obviously, we can't write 10,000 as a fraction or 1,000 or 100 or 10 or even 1. I guess we could write them as that over 1. Actually, we could. So we could write that as 10,000 over 1, 1,000 over 1, 100 over 1. Ten over one, one over one. Okay, so notice that we're kind of getting rid of zeros, right? And we're also moving back the decimal point. So from one, I'm moving it back one, and that's ten to the negative one power. So that's one tenth. Okay. If I move it back one more, going down to ten to the negative two. This is 100. Negative powers here is 1,000th. So 1 over 8,000. And then 10 to the negative fourth is 1 10,000th. And what I want you guys to notice is, first of all, when I go to the zero power, and we could do that with powers of two as well. If we go two to the fourth, two to the fourth is 16, two cubed is eight, two squared is four, and notice here I'm dividing by two each time. Two to the first is two, two to the zero is one, Two to the negative one, if I divide by two, is one half. Two to the negative two, if I divide by two again, is one fourth. So what I want you guys to notice is, first of all, that anything to the zero power is one. And then as we go into the negative powers, what we're really doing is we're flipping it around, okay? So 2 to the first is 2, but 2 to the negative 1 is the reciprocal of that 1 fourth. 2 squared is 4, but the reciprocal of that is 1 fourth. And that works with the tens, and these rules are going to work all the time. So what do we have? When 0 is an exponent, any number to that 0 power is 1. So x to the 0 is 1. Negative 2 fifths to the 0 power is 1. 3xy to the 0 power is 1. This last one, though, is different. Notice that only the y is taken to the 0 power. So this one is going to be 3x times 1 or 3x. So you want to watch out for that. You want to make sure in these with the parentheses, everything is taken to that 0 power. Here, since it's only to the y, only the y is taken to the 0 power. Okay, we said when we have negative exponents, we flip. So a to the negative 1, and I have this little story, because I know each and every one of you have a little brother or sister, right? Or maybe a big brother or sister, or even a dog. And when they're bad, what tends to happen? Well, here, they're going to get sent down, in this case, to the dungeon for timeout to be made positive. So I'm going to write this as a fraction. My a to the negative 1, your little sister that's not being very nice, her parents send her downstairs to the dungeon or the basement for time out until she's better. And that becomes to the first power. You can't have just a blank numerator if you have a denominator, so it's 1. So we're basically the reciprocal. 
here, your little brother or sister is being a brat, so we're going to send them to their room until they get positive. So this becomes A to the N. Okay. Just a silly story to kind of help you remember. So here, here's your little brother, negative 5. He's not being very nice. So we're going to take him to the basement, the dungeon, until he becomes positive. So I be, get 1, negative 5 squared. Okay. So when we simplify, we're getting rid of the negative exponents. Now, I want you to, we haven't talked about this in a long time, since the beginning of the year. Remember that because there, there's a difference between negative 5 squared and negative 5 squared. Okay, this is negative 25, this is positive 25. Just something that we haven't had to have when I was younger, but with the advent more of use of computers, we clarify that. So now this is going to be 1 over negative 25 or negative 1 25th. Okay. In my second example, 3AB to the negative 2, the 3 and the A are just fine. They're behaving, so they're not going to get sent to the dungeon. But there's that negative exponent with the B, so they're going to be sent to the dungeon, to me, made positive. So they got sent to timeout. Okay, here's your little brother or sister again, and they're not being very nice, so their parents are going to send them to their room to make them positive. So it's x cubed over 1 or just x cubed. Take everything number by number, exponent by number. So this is 7 is pot, has no exponent. It's going to stay where it is. The s has no exponent. It's going to stay where it is. 5 has no exponent. It's going to stay where it is, but here... They're not being really nice, so they're going to get sent to the room to be made positive. So they got sent upstairs to the room to become positive. Okay. We can also, with these exponent rules, we can simplify them first, and then we can evaluate when we're asked to evaluate. So if I have 4x squared, y to the negative 3, remember he's, y to the negative 3 is being a brat, they're going down to the dungeon to time out, to make it positive. Okay. So now I want to evaluate it. We've simplified it. Now let's evaluate for x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. So 4 times 3 squared divided by negative 2 cubed. Okay, order of operations, we're going to do the 3 squared first, and that's 9. So 4 times 9. Negative 2 cubed, remember, is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is going to give us negative 8. And I'm not going to multiply these together because if you go back to simplifying fractions, I can simplify the 4 and the negative 8 because 4 goes into negative 8 twice. So this becomes 1, this becomes 2. And then when I've simplified the fraction, it all becomes negative 9 halves. So there I've evaluated. Here this is simplified. So hopefully you can see the difference. Okay. Now, when you simplified fractions, anything over itself equals 1. So 4 over 4 is 1. x over x is 1. 100 over 75. If we wanted to break these down, and I'm going to take you way back, 100 is the same as 2 times 2 times 5 times 5, okay? And 75 is the same as 3 times 5 times 5. So when you learn to simplify fractions, you get rid of the things that they have in common. Okay, so 2 times 2 is 4, so this is 4 thirds. 
fact. It was just a way of reducing your reducing by the common factor. We're going to apply that to exponents now. x to the fifth over x squared, I have five x's. And then I've got two x's on the in the denominator. When I cancel out the things that are the same, this is going to leave me with x cubed over 1 or just x cubed. Okay. With a to the 6th over 3, I've got 6 a's. And then I have 3 a's. And those going to cancel out because they're just equal to 1. And so this is a cubed over 1 or a cubed. Hopefully you guys are thinking you're getting the idea with these. We're looking for some kind of pattern. Okay, so now with the C, I've got a C. I've got four Ds. And I've got eight Cs. And three Ds. So I'm going to cancel out the things that I have in common. These C's are going to cancel out. I've got four D's on top, three on the bottom. So three on the bottom and three on the top are going to be canceled out. And I'm left with one D over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven C's. So C to the seventh. Now what I hope you're noticing is we're doing some subtracting. And that's what we're doing. When we divide, we're going to subtract. Remember, when we multiplied, we added. When we divide, we subtract. So the division property for exponents says that for every non-zero numbers, a, in these integers, m and n, a to the m divided by a to the n equals a to the m minus n. Nice, big, bad rule to remember. But how I remember it is I'm going to subtract and the variable is going to end up where the highest power is located. Okay, so how does that look? What does that look like? My 5 fourths is fine. I'm going to leave it alone. My highest power of x is 11, and it's on the top. So we're going to bring everything to the top and subtract. So it, oh, that should be x. Let's erase that and make it look better. Okay. My highest power of my y is on the bottom. It's y to the 10. So y to the 10 minus 3. And this all simplifies to 5x squared over y to the 7th. Okay. In this example here, my highest power, we're going to first of all simplify the 15 24ths. And 3 goes into both of those, so that becomes 5, because 3 goes in there, and it becomes 5. If I divide 24 by 3, that's going to give me 8. So I've got 5 eighths. My highest power of r is r to the ninth, and I'm going to subtract negative 4. My highest power of s is up here on the top, and I'm going to subtract negative 3, so s to the fourth minus negative 3. If you go back to your integer rules, we're adding them, right? 4 minus negative 3 is the same as 4 plus 3. So I get 5s to the 7th over 8r to the 13th. Okay. Moving on. If I've got a quotient to a quotient, I've got to take everything Again, like we did with multiplication, this n goes to what's inside and it goes both ways. So x squared to the third becomes x. And when we take a power to a power, we multiply. So that becomes x to the sixth. v to the fourth to the third, we multiply. So we're going to get x to the sixth over v to the twelfth. With this second example, if I multiply x to the negative 2 times negative 3 over y to the 4th times negative 3, okay, 
It's going to give me x to the 6th, y to the negative 12th, and there's your Brad brother again downstairs, so they're going to be sent to the room to be made positive. So my answer just becomes x to the 6th, y to the 12th. If my exponent is on the outside and it's the only thing that's negative, another way that we could deal with it is just to flip the whole fraction. So we could get 3 halves to the positive 4. Okay. And that's going to give me 3 to the 4th over 2 to the 4th. And if I'm going to multiply that out, 3 to the 4th is 81 and 2 to the 4th is 16. And that's simplified. Okay. Why does that work? Well, if I were to multiply that inside, I would get 2 to the negative 4 over 3 to the negative 4, and then I would just have to flip them from there. So you can deal with it however you think is the best way for you to remember. So we've spent the past couple lessons looking at multiplying powers, taking powers to a powers, and now we're looking at dividing in quotients of powers. So what does it mean to simplify? When we're talking about simplifying with fractions, we put it in the lowest terms. Here, this is going to mean that there are no negative exponents. That's a rule that was going to be implied. No variables repeat. We can't have the same variable in both the numerator or the denominator, and we reduce any fractions. There's one other thing that might trip you up a little bit or confuse you. And a lot of times, if you see directions, it might say simplify, assume no denominator equals zero. Okay, so, um, so if I have, yeah, so assume the denominator does not equal zero. Right. Remember that division by zero is impossible, so then that fraction would not be possible to have. So what did you learn today? Hopefully you learned what happened with zero exponents. Remember anything to the zero power is one. With our negative exponents, we either send them to the dungeon if they're up top to time out to get better, to get positive. If they're downstairs with a family, we send them upstairs to their room to get positive. And then when we divide, we subtract. Okay. The next couple days, we're going to be joining all these rules in one big jumble. But right now, it's important that you get them down without that big jumble. I'll see you in class. Have a great day.